Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Technique Tuesday. I'm Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth. And tonight we are going to talk about the low fire, no fire piping paste and how you can tint it, what you can tint it with, and a couple of different uses of that. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to allow people to get on and then we'll get started. So Okay. Okay. So Jenny will be watching for questions. And you just need to tell me, Jenny, if you hear yourself. Okay. So, all right. Hey, Don, how are you? Guess what? You challenged me, what, less than an hour ago? And I'm going to do that piece tonight. I've already demo, uh, got one side of my vase done. So thank you for the challenge. That was awesome. It's an awesome photo. So I'm going to do it on this and then I'll do it on uh, ceramics and glass also later. But uh, I thought you'd like to know that. All right. All right. So we'll give it a few minutes. And so just comment in the chat. We are live on YouTube and I have shared this feed to my Facebook page. Okay. Hey, Debbie. Mobile, Mobile, Alabama, right? I think that's correct. So we're going to do the no fire, low fire piping paste tonight and we're going to use it as a non fired product. Um, you could do most of the same things as a fired product if you're a glass user. Um, so I'm going to show you some different things. So I'm going to give it just a few more minutes and allow a few more people to get on. And I'm looking at different cameras. That's why my head goes back and forth. Hey, Dan, thanks for joining. And Eddie, hi there. So I came on earlier and I tested this. So let's hope we don't have any issues. I probably shouldn't have even said that because I'll jinx myself. Uh, we are having rain and thunderstorms here. So... Let's cross our fingers that I can stay on. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is switch my camera to overhead. All right. So I'm going to kind of zoom in on these. And let me put something white behind it. I think that'll make it show up better. So this is our low fire, no fire piping paste on glass. Okay, so we have a white, a black, and then I tinted it. And I tinted it with color concentrates. Okay. Which are this. So you can do that because it is a fired. You can also do that as a non fired it as far as anything that you're not going to um, put it on so like these ornaments here are in a non-fired use of the piping paste so you can come back on top of here and you can shade with acrylics i've shaded with a gold on this okay but you can also come back and just add color where you want it okay so there's different uses of it. So tonight what I've done is I've pre-mixed. I'm going to show you how to mix, but I also have pre-mixed some colors up. Welcome. Okay. Welcome, Bobby, Nancy. Hey there. Okay. So I was talking about the non-fired use of our paste. So the paste comes in a four ounce jar. You put that into a piping bottle. That we sell. If you buy a paste kit, the bottles, the brush, everything, the tool, everything comes in there. Okay. But if you buy it singly, then you'll need a piping kit, which you can buy in a half ounce, which is this one. I don't like the smaller bottles because they're harder to press on. And then this is the one ounce size and they're just empty. And then you fill them with whatever product you want. Um, okay. So let me zoom back out a little bit. All right. So um, now I lost my train of thought. So half ounce, one ounce, 
white and then black and i don't have a black one here to show you i don't think yes i do so here is a black one same principles i always write on the top when i've opened it okay so this one was opened in february and you can see that it's still pretty liquid do you see how i've scraped down the sides of the jar okay so using the tool I've scraped that down. Anything that is dry on the side of the jar, that will not reconstitute. If it gets into your uh, bottle, then it's gonna clog your tip and you're gonna have just frustration, okay? So I try to keep it all down to the bottom or down to where it's at. It comes with the foil seal. You can also put like a saran wrap over the top, then add your lid back on. Then you can also put it in a plastic bag. If you live in Arizona, you could put it um, in a plastic bag, put it in the refrigerator even, if that is how dry your climate is, okay? So to get, I have one that's open here. Oh no, what I wanted to show you too is, look at this one. This one is old. I did not write on my jar and I wanted to show you that it becomes hard, okay? It's hard in there. There's no reconstituting that. All right, so this is trash, so FYI. If you needed to thin the product, and we'll do that to the black one here, we're gonna get, and this comes in any of the kits that you purchase, the GM 300 glass medium. This is not gloss medium, it's glass. This is a glass product. We're just gonna use it in a non-fired fashion tonight, okay? You would add a couple of drops of that, and then you would stir it up and that would soften it and make it a little bit thinner. Okay, so you would do that prior to um, putting it into your bottle. If you already had it in the bottle, then you could also add a couple of drops into your bottles and just make sure you shake that up well. So let's grab, I've got one here, um, one of those. So you can see it's there at the top and it's a little stiff in this particular one and so what i'm going to do is grab my medium and put like three drops in it you can attempt to stir that around it just depends on how much you've got in there i find it's easier just to shake it okay hi marlene thanks for joining okay so you just need, and this was a thicker one, so this is probably not one that I would use, but I'm going to show you how to. Uh, what I did earlier was I took um, a little cup, you know, these little condiment cups, and put some of the piping in there. And I'm going to do that now to show you how to tint it, okay? So I'm going to use some out of my bottles because there's no sense of wasting and I don't have any classes coming up. So I'm just going to take it out of my bottles. You can leave it in the bottle. Uh, same thing, uh, put it in a plastic bag that will help keep the uh, air away from it. But I had a bunch done up for a class and I'm going to just use it for this. So I'm just going to take it out. You would just take it out of your jar. Okay. All right. And Jenny will, if you have any questions, Jenny will uh, read those off to me. So be sure and put those in. So this is just the paste that I've had in the bottle and I'm just adding it to a little cup so that I can tint it. So you can tint with the color concentrates. So let's say that, and I could not find my, well, yes I did, I did find one sample. Let me show you this. So those of you that work on ceramics, this particular piece, let's back off, okay. So this is a matte glaze piece. This has our CSPO3 matte medium. This is a earthenware piece, okay? Fired on, and then I came in and did all my paste work, okay? So you can kind of see it there. And I shaded with the color concentrates, and then I stilted and fired this to an 017, 015, 016, 017 in that area, okay? So you can use this on ceramics. It just needs to be, and it can be a glossy glaze. I like the finish of the matte, but you can kind of see that. I'll turn it sideways so that you can see it. Okay, so it has a raised edge to it. 
Can you see that? Okay, I think you can see it down here on this one here too. And then the raised dots. So it goes on white and on this particular case, and I just shade it on top. So there's multiple ways that you can use it. Okay. All right. Cheryl, hello everyone. I finally got onto one. <laughs> I'm glad you could join me. All right. So because this is a no fire, also keep your tools, brushes, whatever you're using, be sure and keep them clean because it does harden and you'll have to soak them to get that off. Okay. So even though I've got samples here on glass, I'm going to show you how to tint it. And you could use this way of tinting it for uh, the glass or the ceramic or a non-fired. So I'm going to use the color concentrate and I've got 161. You never go more than 50-50. Okay, half of the green concentrate, half of the white paste. And remember, anytime you add something to white, what are you going to get? A pastel. Okay, you're not going to get the same green. So go darker and you'll get a lighter version. Okay, so you're never going to get a red. It's going to turn pink on you. Okay, the only way you could get a red would be to do it with an acrylic. And that would have to be on something that was not going to be fired at all. Okay, so you can see that that's just a light green. But look at the difference in the color. Okay. I tinted one earlier tonight and I used 160 and this is the color I got. Okay, so it's a lot lighter. Just FYI, because you're adding it to curious if this can be placed above pearlized ceramics that's been fired to a oh, pearlized. So are you saying Bobby that it's an overglaze? that you've got on there, like a, a mother pearl, halo gold, a luster of some sort, and you want to put this on, you can, as long as it's non-fired, you're not going to fire it again because your, your luster would go away. See, this has been fired to an 017, okay? But as long as you don't care what it looks like, it's just going to stand up so pretend this is ceramic. It's going to stand up and it's going to harden in 24 hours and it just cannot be submerged into water. Okay, so it would not be good on a food safe um, surface. You would want to put it on a like a box. Um, a picture frame would be really good. That would work great. Okay, so then I'm going to take my empty bottle. Yes, Mother of Pearl Lester. So yes, you could put it on afterwards and then you could just um, let it harden for 24 hours. Like I said, just don't submerge it into water. So it would be a, well, actually that would be a fourth. So you're not going to fire it is basically what you're going to do. It's just like if you had painted it on wood, plastic, uh, canvas, anything like that, but it can be used. Yes. If you don't like it, you can wipe it off. Always clean your surface with either um, alcohol or like distilled vinegar. I just used vinegar earlier and I'm going to show you the base that I did or part of it. Um, Mr. Don Edmonds is on here and he sent me a photograph earlier and he said, this looks like a polyp thing, something you would do. And uh, I accepted his challenge. I came back here and I decided that's what I was going to show you tonight. So I'm anxious to, okay, so it takes a little bit to get in there. Just never go more than 50-50 because if you do, you start breaking down the stand-up capability of the product. Does that make sense? If you add too much color, you're just making it, I can't get him to stand up. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, um, you'll, you'll end up making it so that you can't. Um, it'll, what do I want to say? It's going to make the product flatten. It's not going to stay built up. In other words, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, perfect for vases. Think of it, um, and I'm going to show you a vase that um, I did just an hour ago or so. And 
it's just something that I, I think I bought this particular one on Amazon. But you know, the dollar store Tuesday morning, they've always got different colored vases. Um, so you could take one of those and add this to it. Now, of course, if the piece that you're working on does not, if it's not clear, you can't see through it, then you're gonna have a problem with trying to put a pattern on, okay? All right, so everybody can hear me and see me okay and all that's working. So what I'm doing is shaking it down, okay? So that most of the product is in the bottom. So I took a little cup here and I put just your regular ceramic sponge in it, dampened it with water, set it down in the bottom and I'm putting my tips down in that, that's gonna keep those moist. Most of the time, I usually put it inside like a plastic, or excuse me, a uh, damp paper towel that I folded in quarters. That works also, but you can do this also. You just need to make sure that you squirt some of it out before you go to your piece, just in case the water from that sponge comes up into it, okay? And if you guys hear any feedback or anything, be sure and let me know, type it in. Okay, so we can know that we have a problem. All right, so you're just going to throw that cup away. I'm real fuzzy. Okay, um, it shows five bars. Okay, all right. So this is a glass face. Okay. This is not going to be fired. This is a non-fired technique that we're doing tonight. So this is a picture that Mr. Don sent me that said it looked like a Paula thing. So I took that picture, created an outline, and I can upload this to the blog if you want it. I can do that. So I needed this as a color reference for what I was going to do. And I don't have it completed, but I'll show you. So looky here. So I took the outline and created, and I've got it behind me. And there's the next one that we're going to do tonight. Okay. So it's pink. How did I get it that pink? I tinted it with an acrylic, with a folk art multi-surface acrylic. And this color is magenta. Oops, wrong way. Okay, so I was able to keep that color. You're not going to be able to keep the color. The green that I used on here was that ceramic product. That was the 160 color concentrate. But you can come back and do shading and stuff on top of this with acrylics. Okay, so what do you think of that? Kind of cool. So this would just be a vase that you could buy at the craft store. You can find them at Goodwill. You know, there's all different places that you can find them. Okay. All right. So before I start, what I want to do is to show you how to clean. And I'm going to clean my tips because they've been sitting here. So normally, you've got the clear cap on there. I've labeled this that it's WLFP, which is white, low fire paste. And I've got magenta acrylic in it. Okay, so you take that tip off the closure, add your tip that you want. The piping kits come with four different tips. I recommend the white one because it's larger and it's easier to use, especially if you have carpal tunnel or arthritis. And I've had carpal tunnel surgery. So no more than just a half a turn on, half a turn off. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Okay, in the piping paste. This kit or the piping kit, there's a syringe. Pull water up in it, then twist on your tip and plunge that clean. And do that multiple times until that tip has most of that out of there. There also is a little green, um, like Q tip looking thing that comes with it. And I don't have one of those back here that you can kind of swish around in there and then flush it again. I always tap out any of the water that's on the tip. Okay, we have a question. Mm 
Marie wants to know if we can apply this product over a colored glaze piece. Yes, Marie, if it has been fired, you're done with it as far as firing goes, you can put it on a glaze piece. This particular one is a matte glaze. And then I'd use just the white straight from the bottle that's laying there on the piece. And then I shaded it with uh, the color concentrates. Looks beautiful on a black glaze, you know, a dark colored glaze being a white. Um, and you can look at, if you just search on paste on the website, you, there's a couple of different technique sheets out there. One is a black box and I've got uh, tulips on it. Um, and then there's a white one with black on it, I believe. So there's a couple of different ways. Okay, so yes, it can. And this, you can fire it, if it's on the ceramic, you can fire that to an 015, 016, 017, somewhere in that range, okay, will work to cure it. Or you can leave it unfired if it's nothing that's going to be submerged in water. You wouldn't want to put it on a mug that you're going to be drinking out of and be washing because it's not, that's not what it's made for, okay. It is. To, uh, it would be non-fired, or you need to fire it to that uh, lower temperature. Okay. All right. So I've cleaned my bottle. What is the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to test to make sure that it's coming out and there's no water in there. Okay. And the damp paper towel is nice just to keep wiping your tip off so that you don't have any of that debris on the end of it. You always start from the background forward. And if I'm going to do that, what am I supposed to do first? I'm supposed to do my green. And we're going to use the new green that I just made. Okay, so a half a turn. Always test it to make sure that it's coming out. Okay. So if it was stiff in the bottle, you could add a couple of drops of the glass medium. You can probably hear the thunder. Okay, so you would then with the glass medium, just one to two drops at a time. Okay, so the first thing we do when we do paste is you create your stem. So I've taped a pattern that way. This one I thought was nice. Now, if it's a rounded vase, unless it's got a large opening, it's going to be harder uh, to see. Okay, it's going to be harder to get a pattern in. So always do your stems first. Always start from where it grows from so that you get a nice tip, okay? If you have a skip, you can go back and just fill that in. And you can see how it's raised there when you look at it from the side, okay? All right, so we will put that one in our little container. And while that's drying, I'm gonna work on another, I'm gonna work on a back petal. So Dawn, do you like it? Can you? Okay. Let's test that one again real quick. All right. So I'm going to start back here. The other thing is you always want, you're going to be brushing this. So you don't want to put everything just right on top of each other. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to lay that inside my damp paper towel and in the kits, or you can buy them individually. The, um, Number four, which is a 2004 KB brush. It's a synthetic Klinsky blend. And that one is what I'm going to use for my brush. I, I've got the glass medium in two different wells. I say I have my dirty and my clean. So I'm going to condition my brush. So those of you that are ceramics, when we use latex or anything, we always condition our brush with soap. This time we're conditioning it with the glass medium, okay, because that's the product. We're using a glass product, and I'm just kind of pinching out the excess so that it becomes a flat brush, okay? See that? It's rounded on that, and on the chisel edge, it becomes a flat. So it looks like a filbert where it has, or a cat's tongue. It has like a U shape. So after you pipe out, you're going to just catch and pull, catch and pull, catch and pull catch and pull and catch and pull okay and look what i just did i knew i was going to do that i stuck my finger in the, my yellow on this side i thought i had it dry enough okay so every time i'm going to rinse my brush 
wipe it on a paper towel to make sure that I can get all of that product out because I keep putting product in it. It's going to harden in my brush and then I've ruined my brush. So I like to do an area and then turn it around and we're going to do another area away from that so that it gives it a little bit of time to dry. So I'm going to go over here and do another petal. And I'm pulling my strokes down to the center. That's where everything grows out of. Okay, don't forget, I've cleaned my surface with um, either white distilled vinegar or you could use alcohol also. You just want to make sure there's no oils on there. So catch and pull, catch and pull, catch and pull, catch and pull, catch and pull. Wipe out the excess, clean the brush. Clean again. I like to make sure it's clean every single time so I don't have to worry about it. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do this one here. Now this is a large petal, so I'm going to break it into half. I'm going to stop there, tuck that back inside my damp paper towel. And now I'm going to touch, catch and pull, catch and pull. So I'm going to turn this sideways a little bit so you can kind of see. So I'm lifting, 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 lifting. Does that make sense? What did Don love it? You are the best. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just love that picture. I can't wait to do it um, with some actual glass painting. And uh, so Don Edmonds sent me this photograph over here on my left. And that's what inspired this. Um, I was going to do my basic thing that I always do. And I thought, no, nah, let's do something different. Okay, so we're going to catch and pull, catch and pull, catch and pull, catch and pull. So you don't want a, the brush flat as you're coming down. That doesn't look good. Okay. You want to lift it so that you get that feathering on the ends and that gives you more dimension. Any questions, Jenny? No questions. All right. All right. So welcome everyone. So I'm working with the uh, no fire, low fire piping paste. Okay. This is the white. And I've tinted this one with an acrylic. Okay. I'll lay this one up here so you can see that. This is a uh, folk art multi-surface and it is magenta. Okay, so let's do another one so we can go over here and do this one. I'm going to separate those petals just a little bit and start away from it. So you can wave it. And I'm not working directly over this, so it may look like I'm not on my line, which I'm probably not because I'm looking at it from a distance. Okay. When you're working and then pinch that brush so that it becomes a flat. Okay. And you're going to catch that and pull it, catch and pull. You can even kind of give it a little bit of a nudge and then pull. That gives it a nice ruffly, kind of creates more texture to it. You want to make sure that you do all of your strokes the first time around because as this starts to dry, it's already dry where it's thinner here at the bottom. And so you need to get it done and move on. It's When you start going back over it, you end up lifting off what you've already done. Okay. All right. So let's turn this around and do one over on this side. Just make sure your hands and your fingers are clean because if you touch another area of your piece, then you're going to transfer that product. Okay. So a nice thick line. Um, that line uh, should be, let me zoom in, the thickness of a pencil lead, okay, is a good, can you see that? It's about the thickness of a pencil lead. 
All right. And you need to not talk like I did and come back and immediately start doing your brush work. If it starts setting, it's, it's a no fire and a low fire. And I'm pulling down towards this. You can kind of curve it a little bit on the different areas and the different petals. So you want to follow the shape that it grows. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm just pinching out the excess. So I'm still leaving the medium in it, but I pinched out the excess. Now Yes, I should be back live now. Hopefully. So please tell me that you guys can uh, see me again. I stopped everything. Uh, it's really raining hard and thundering. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. And I'm probably not going to be able to pop anything on the feed because it, those don't even show up in be live. So. Can you see me? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, if you can, when you can hear me, I am having uh, storms. So let's just hope that it stays on. If it doesn't, I'll have to do like I did last time and record it and pop it back up. So hopefully I'm going to wait until we make sure you can see me again. Okay. So I should be live, so to speak. So somebody tell me, Sherry, Marlene, Don, before I keep, get to going. And Jenny, you said you can see me.
Okay. It showed when I scratched. I'm not even on screen. Oh, scratched the dot there. Okay, okay. Okay, here we go. All right, ready? <laughs> it's really raining really bad. <laughs> I may have to do this another time. Okay, so I'm going to start back away from that stem. I'm just going to do part of this. Tuck that back in my damp paper towel. I flattened my brush. It is conditioned. So when you're pulling this down, now this one was the one I tinted with the color concentrate. And even though this is on a non-fired piece, I still was able to use my concentrates. You don't have to walk out and buy an acrylic, okay? You can use the concentrates. Let's hope. So I stopped it. Okay, so I'm going to turn. This face is heavy. And then I. My voice is double. I don't have anything else open. Um, there's no other mics on. Is she hearing you? Don says no picture or sound. I still show a photo. Do you have me on? Okay. I can put me in the screen and I can go like, no, wrong way. Go like that. That's not the one I wanted. Okay, so I am putting myself in the lower right hand corner just to check to see if that, uh, Marie, if that's better and you don't hear a double. I'll have to keep myself there if that's the only way we can do it. So if you start to let this dry, then it's not going to pull. Okay, so I'm just catching and pulling. But do you see how that completes that leaf? I didn't have to go all the way down. I backed off like a quarter of an inch on my start and my stop. Okay. Okay. So Den says everything's good. Um, I think I stuck my finger in that, but that's all right. So don't go all the way down. And this is a smaller leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and do both sides. Tuck that in, make sure my brush is conditioned. Wipe out the excess, catch the edge, catch and pull, catch and pull, catch and pull. And you want to do it in the direction, again, that it grows from. Turn your piece so it's comfortable. Catch and pull, catch and pull, catch and pull. So what you're doing is you're creating the veins as you're going. And I'll show you. Okay, so here's the leaf. You put in your center vein and you start back here. And then when you pull in with your strokes, see the arrows, those are the directions you're pulling. You're not pulling across, you're not pulling straight down until you get to this guy here. You want to almost like a comma and you pull in, pull in and then you come in and pull in. So if you're a slow worker, do half of your leaf and then do the other half. But I start here and work up. And even when I pipe in the second side, I still start up here and work myself down. Okay, so you want to go up and then you come down. You still have both. Oh, okay, so now. Okay. So Marie, you may have two um, YouTube sessions open, you might close and go back in and see if that corrects it. That's the only thing I can think of, okay? Because everybody else seems to be good. This is a huge leaf here. So, and I'm using, you know, when I mix this up, I use some that was in a bottle already and it's a little stiffer. I should have added some medium to make it a little bit thinner. So pull. Pull, 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 
catch and pull, catch and pull. See how that's creating the veins and I'm coming towards the center. If for any reason you lose some of it, like up here, I want a little bit more, you can go back and you can add and then just make sure you catch just a little bit of it so it doesn't look like you've laid a line on there. You want it to look natural like the rest of it. Clean that brush out. And then we'll add this side. Okay, so now I've, I'm I'm going to pull that down really quick because if I let this, I'm going to have to rinse my tip is what I've got to do. Okay. And if you joined late, I'm going to bring this back over here. So you take the tip off. Always keep the bottle laying down. The reason for that is every time you stand the bottle up, then your paste goes to the bottom. You lay it down and then you end up getting air pockets in your paste and it's going to burp and spit on your piece. That's the only way I know how to say it. So connect your tip and see how it's not even wanting me to. Yeah, see, there's something in there that's clogging it. There we go. So there was a little hard piece or it dried because it is a no fire. So it can dry inside these tips. These tips are stainless steel. If you don't have time to clean it right away, you can drop it in your water. Just make sure you clean it later because I have found some of mine in the sink and forgot they were in my water bowl. Okay. So don't forget. So blot out any water that's in there half a turn to put it on. You don't want to go too much more of a turn because it'll end up, you'll not be able to get it off. And now it's coming out again. And always test it because you don't want water to squirt onto your piece. Okay. Okay, see how much easier that is. And then I'm going to stop about there. So this is a new design. Um, so I'm kind of just working it as I'm going. So I'm going to be on kind of a little bit of the edge here to get that smaller space. And then I'm going to turn my brush and pull, touch 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 and pull. I'm going to wipe off that excess because I'm getting it on my flower. And I'm going to rinse my brush. And because that is dry, semi dry there. I can actually take just the medium that I've got in my palette and I can loosen that and remove it. Okay. All right. So now we can go back to another flower. So I'm going to put that in my damp sponge so that it stays moist. I'm going to check to make sure this is still coming out fluid. And I got to remember I've got one. So this is what I'm going for. Okay. That's the side I did earlier. Those that join blades. Okay. And now this one starts way down here. So I'm going to start here. And it's tucked up underneath this one. And I'm going to do a partial. Because if it's too big for you, you're never going to get around and it starts to dry. And I know my limitations. So because we're coming down that side, that finishes off that petal. Pull, pull, pull. Touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull. Rinse. So I've got a dirty and I got a clean here. And then I'm just pressing down with my finger to remove the excess to flatten the brush. And it is really coming down out there. All right, let's hope we don't lose power. Touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull. And I'm going towards the center. Okay, that's where everything is growing out of is the center. So you're creating your shading and kind of your highlighting. I'm going to just quickly touch that real quick. But it had already started to dry where it was thinner there. So if you keep messing with it, you're just going to destroy it and create a mess. Okay.
All right, any questions? Anybody? So this is just tinted with an acrylic. I just used a little cup and put the paste in, added the acrylic. You could add the color concentrates. You never go more than 50-50. Pretty much with either any of these products, you can also tint um, those that are on my glass people, you could tint with the designers also. Touch and pull, touch and pull. And remember, you can kind of push, and that gives it even more of a textured look. Okay, rinse. So usually in my dirty, then I'll go to my clean, and then I just flattened it, and we're going to continue on. Did you hear, I don't know if you can hear that scraping. Um, this is already dry that's behind it. So when I touch that, it's like a little bump and you'll hear that scraping or um, scratching type sound. You're not hurting it. Touch and pull, touch and pull. Okay. So I think the possibilities are endless. Um, you could put it on white and come back and color it afterwards with the acrylics. And that's what I've done on this ornament. Okay. So it was put on with the white and then I used uh, treasure gold. It has a glitter on the inside, treasure gold. And I have some um, videos that are free out there on the YouTube doing ornaments with the paste and then I have some paid tutorials also. All right, no more questions. You guys are quiet tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this back just a little bit from where it's at. I'm gonna stop there because I need time. It's a large petal, pull, touch and pull, touch and pull. It's like you're, you're wisping, wisping. So if this was my hand, so I would touch it and wisp and just kind of feather it up. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Okay. Pull towards the center. Because that's where it's growing from. And just a little bit more there. You got to do it quickly because it starts to dry. Okay, pinch out the excess. You just have to remember if you're a ceramic person, this is only as a, it'd be like a third fire product or put it on after you're done firing your products your pieces and then use it in a non fun you can just be a vase a picture frame that type nothing food safe okay because you can't wash this even though it will harden and dry in 24 hours you need to um, you could put this on candles done that before um, It'll harden, but you can't submerge it. If you put this vase in the sink, in the water, okay, then it's going to actually soften it over time, okay? Which you can do if you need to get it off. I mean, that's, that's how you do it, okay? All right, so I'm going to constantly turn. Can you, I don't know if you can see some of the parts that are dry. It's hard to see because it's glass and it, the reflection and everything. Well, thanks, Dan. I'm not sure how many people would like to just sit and watch me piddle and paint. But thank you, sir. So do you see how that bottle stayed squished in? So you got to be really careful when you stick it inside your paper towel and it's pushed in because as you release, it's going to suck 
the water out of your towel or out of your sponge. So make sure it's completely rounded and, and as it gets lower with product, it tends to do that. So just make sure that you don't have that suction occur. And if you do, make sure you test it on something before you go to your piece so you don't ruin it because otherwise it's gonna spit water on your piece. Touch and pull, 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 touch and pull. So see, I backed off on that edge, but because when I pull the stroke down, it finishes that edge. So you don't have, because if you put your paste all the way down and you try to do that, you have too much product there. It's going to make a mess. Okay. All right. So we're going to add that little guy. And I went too far down on this one, but because it can be underneath my center, that's okay. Touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull. Okay. So there is our flower and i want you to try to see see how much it's raised i think you can see that you can see the raised area there and then here's the one that i did earlier so once you rinse it in your medium then you can go to your water dish and rinse it always test it on a paper towel to make sure you don't see any color coming out that's going to tell you if you've got it clean or not. Okay. All right. So what I did earlier was I mixed up some yellow and I just taped it shut here. And that's what I did in the center. And then I stuck my finger in it. So this is CC 125 curry and the white paste. Uh, you could put it in a bottle, but I was like, yeah, not for just a little bit. You'd, you'd waste your time trying to get it out. Now, this is set here for 45 minutes or so. So I'm going to add one drop of the glass medium to it because it's a glass product. And then I can just stir that in just to loosen and liquefy it. And I've just got a cheap brush here from the craft store. And I'm going to add a little bit. You can just tap it on. You can um, for that center. But as far as the stamens coming out, let me get some of that off my brush. I'm going to pick up a generous load. I'm going to try to do this without picking up some of I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I want to give you the idea. So you pull and then just pull in. I'm not sure that brush is going to work. That's not the one I used before. So let me grab another one. Condition that brush. This is just a liner. It's like you got to kind of mix it to get it kind of loose. So I'm tapping it down and then pull. Tapping it down, pull. different heights, different lengths, different um, directions, straight to the right, to the left. See how that's working? Now, could you have done it with the bottle? Yeah, if you if you do if you got a yellow that you've got mixed up, absolutely. So you could do like we do the uh, what I call my doofer. Okay, so you get the idea of that and then you just come into the middle and just tap in and then you can shade on top of that after it dries and you would shade with acrylics if you're doing the non-fired you would shade with your color concentrates if you're doing fired okay as if it were that base that i showed you the your okay so i shaded with the color concentrates so like the green is on the leaves there cc 161. all right so let's i don't know if let's see if i can do this without making a, a mess i'm going to put this back 
into my damp sponge that's in my cup there. And I'm going to grab just white. I'm going to check it to make sure how thin it is. See, that's moving pretty good. If it wasn't, I could put a couple of drops of the glass medium into that. So this is just the white paste out of the jar by itself. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Don. Okay, so I'm going to attach my tip half a turn and I'm going to test it to make sure it's coming out. And see that one, watch, I'm going to push in, see how the suction. So I would not stick that back in my sponge until after it's released because it will actually pull the water out of that paper towel. Okay, so you've got to be really careful and I'm going to change paper towels because that one. So I just take a towel, fold it, fold it, and then I dip the corner in my water bowl so that it's wet, just so I have it that I can clean my tip each time. Okay. All right. So for those of you that just do the glass, so that one was tinted with the color concentrates. That nah, doesn't show very good. You see that one? So that's, um, and remember, every time you tint it, if you're going, what you need to go a shade darker because it, you're adding it to white, okay? And it's going to turn a pastel. Here's one where I've slumped my piece completely. Uh, so fused, slumped, and then I've added the paste. And I just took it back to a minimum of 1380 if you're doing your fired pieces. You've got to be able to cure the product, okay? All right, so let's do a white one. Now, because I'm doing white, I am going to change and put new medium out because I don't want that pink to get in there. And it will, trust me. So let's do this. And cover that up so we make sure it's not going to get in there. Okay. And I'm going to remember not to lay the vase down on the other side. <laughs> Or I could be in trouble. Any questions? I don't see any. Okay, condition the brush. So once again, you always start with your stems. And I know this is going to look weird on this piece, but you know what? This would be a, a piece for the glass show so they can see the different uses of the product. Okay, normally we would put the leaves on first. I did the stems, but because that's wet, I'm going to move up here and do a back petal. Always work from the background forward, okay? So I'm not going to go all the way down to here. I'm going to back off like an eighth to a quarter of an inch, nice thick outline. I'm going to stop, not go all the way down. My brush is conditioned. And I'm going to just grab it and pull. Grab and pull, grab and pull, grab and pull, grab and pull. And see how that completes that petal. You don't have to um, do the stroke or do the product all the way down. Okay. So we're going to do this one. Stop. Touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull. And it doesn't have to go all the way down to where the other one meets it. You can have a gap there. And you see that it doesn't go all the way down. Okay. I'm just going to do a couple here so you can see. And then we'll go back to the one that's dry on the other side. Press. Tuck and tuck, pull, tuck, pull, tuck, pull, tuck, pull. If you want more of a um, rigid line, you can be on like the chisel edge of it and you can pull it that way instead of flat. You can go on the chisel and you'll have more of a lined look to it. Okay. All right. So that's how you do it with just the white. Okay. 
And that's what I did on that ceramic piece. Okay, so these were all white. And then I came in and shaded. And I'm going to show you how to do the shading on the first one that I did before I came on live. Because it does need to be dry. The drier that it is, um, uh, the more it's going to absorb into it. Okay. So we need to add some color to our pale leaves is what we need to do. And I'm going to use an acrylic to do that. So I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to reach. I've got what's called fresh cut grass. Again, it's a multi-surface. And you know what? I don't want that in my palette. So I'm going to put it inside a little cup. I only need a dot of it. Hardly any. If you were on your ceramic piece that you're going to fire, you would just come in and you would use your color concentrate if you're going to fire it. Okay. Not if you're, if you're not firing it, do not use. So do not use um, the acrylics. Okay. Cause it will just burn out and I'm not sure it possibly could lift some of that off. I've never tested that one. So I'm going to use the medium or the small Sumi brush now to do what I call is Sumi shading. And I think I've done that on enough of the other videos. I'm not going to show my water bowl. Um, but the larger the area, the softer the look. And remember, I'm going into an acrylic, so it can be over on the glass where there's nothing because it's going to stick. And the one reason I'm using the multi-surface color is because it is just what it says. It goes on any surface, glass, tin, metal, wood, plastic, canvas, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to drag it off to a point. To remove the excess you can kind of touch it to your paper towel if you need to and i'm just going to tip a tiny tiny bit into that green and i'm going to tuck that green over here and i'm going to just sit it down sit it down mush 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 and kind of walk it back and what happens is do you see how it's bleeding into the crevices that we've got there And if I keep walking it back, it's going to do that. Now I'm going to let that dry. Actually, I'm just going to pop over here and do this one. So tucking it in. Water's on my brush, so water is the carrier. And you can see it better on that one because of the fact uh, the paste is closer to the stem and the center vein there. Now I had some that ran. So I'm just going to touch it with my finger. Okay. And this one here is starting to get out of its fence, I call it. So I'm going to just touch it and get that back. So sometimes you may need to not use as much water. Listen to that thunder. Can you hear it, Jenny? <laughs> Let's hope it goes. Uh oh, Jenny's on the other side of town and she's about to get it next. So I'm going to blot out some of this water since it was, and it's on glass. I mean, so it's going to move, guys. It, it, it's not like it's canvas where it can absorb into it. And you can go right over that center vein if you need to. So tuck it in, always tuck the color and kind of mush the brush down. I call it sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left. You just got to remember you start dampening the paste too much and you can start to loosen it. Okay. So keep that in mind. I think you can see that. So this one I've only done one time. This one I did like three times. Okay. So I'm going to just tip and I'm going to tuck it into this guy. Sit it down, sit it down, wish, wish, wish. So I'm not lifting the brush. I'm just kind of bouncing it along. Turn your piece because you always want to tuck the color. Tuck it in, tuck it in, sit it down, sit it down, wish, wish, wish. And what it does is it starts, because of the water, it starts going down into the veining that you've created here and creates shading for you. 
kind of cool. What do you think of that? Have to go. Thanks, Paul and Jenny. Okay, bye, Dan. We'll see you next time. Let me know if I win. Okay, I will. <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> uh, somebody's going to win. We're going to uh, be sure and comment because we are going to draw for two downloadable projects of your choice uh, for $14.95 or less. So you'll have to go out to the website, coloredforearth.com, and look under the learn here. And even if it's not a downloadable one, let me know and I'll still send you the PDF. I haven't got all of those converted over yet. Okay. So I'm just adding a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And what I'm gonna do is go up here onto this one. So I picked out a color called Berry Wine which is like a, a burgundy color. And then I'm going to also, I think I'll start with the white and this is just wicker white. And again, I'm using these because they are multi-surface. They work on anything. Sure I am. Okay. This one's almost empty. There we go. All right. Okay, so water load, drag off to a point. I'm going to blot to get rid of a lot of that moisture. And I'm going to tip into the white. Let me bring this down so you can see that. Okay, because remember on the photograph, there was a lot of white and pinks in here. Probably should have started with the pink first. I think that's, eh, we'll do the white. That's all right. I've got it. So again, work from the background forward. So on this particular one, it was, there's some, it's mostly on the front pedal. So I'm not going to worry about the back pedals just yet. So I'm going to tuck this in here. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right. And I'm going to sit it all the way down because it'll keep it from running on me. Okay, if you need to take another brush, put some water on it and just come back and blot or move something, tell it to get off of that area. Sometimes you need a little bit stiffer brush. I'm using the Sumi. Okay, that's kind of cool. This is uh, an experiment, guys. I haven't done this one before. Those are learning right along with me. And I am going to put some in here. And I'm going to walk it to the right. And walk it to the left. So kind of pretty. Let's go back in. Now I've got all this yellow in here and I'll probably have to go back in and add that because it's going to be too hard to try to keep it off of there, which is fine. Sherry's asking where I got my vase. Um, I believe this is like a four and a half inch square and I believe it was on Amazon. Uh, Joanne's Fabrics has a lot of vases on sale a lot of times. Um, I've got some big round ones uh, that I bought over there. But you can, you know, pretty much any kind of craft store. Okay. But as we all know, you can find anything on Amazon. And I'm going to go ahead and put that down in there. And like I said, I'll go back and add the yellow later now the closer i get back here watch what happens you see how it's starting to it starts to run into the crevices of that petal and i'm blowing that because there was like a little bit of a, a bubble there 
Okay, rinse, drag off, blot, blot on my paper towel. And we're going to tuck it in, make sure you can see that. And then you may even need to, you know, use a liner to get down in there. I'm going to dampen my stiffer brush and just take that off. And you want to take it off right away. Once this multi-surface gets on there, it's there. Okay. You got to work quickly if you want it off. Okay. Any other? Did you mention? Okay. That's the same question. Um, you know, look at your thrift stores. Lordy, there's usually tons. Just make sure it's something you think you can clean up. So I just cleaned it with um, either white distilled vinegar or you can clean it with um, alcohol. You just want to get all the oils off of it from your hands. See how that's bleeding and running into that petal? I'm going to add some pink on top of this uh, later. I may not be able to do it while we're on here, but um, I wanted you to see how you can achieve the color. I was thinking the flat surface was easier to work. It is easier, and you can get your pattern, you know, on the inside. That's what's nice too. Um, but there is a, um, I don't, I think it was Joanne's, a big round. I, I want to say it's a six inch diameter one and I've got those and it's something large enough I can get a pattern in um, there's some beautiful dark blue glass that's out there that just the white paste itself would be beautiful on okay so you can kind of see the difference in those petals so this one had a lot of open space so I can take the pattern off so you can see it. Maybe I can. I don't know that that makes any difference for you. But you, you can kind of see the gray through it. You can see my hands. So you're going to get a translucent look. And I'll add more white onto that one. Okay. All right. So hopefully this is something... Could you do the center after the shading? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, let me let me grab uh, the white real quick and get this on done, and then I'll do that. So this one kind of faded out with the white that I had on there, so I'm going to quickly add it. I'm going to add some white in there. Okay. So then this one had a little bit of a brown and you know what i did not grab a brown but hold on i think i have one here one second because i don't think i want black complete black on there there we go all right, this one's new. So this is Burnt Umber is this color. Okay, we may lose Jenny. <laughs> She's having lightning now. I, I, I think I'm jinxed. I don't know that I should really be doing lives. <laughs> I keep getting multiple things going wrong, I tell you. So I'm going to switch to the small semi brush there again. I'm going to water load, drag off. To remove the excess, blot a little bit more of the water out, and then I'm going to tuck into that brown. And I'm going to shade it, since I'm not done shading around, I'm going to shade it up on the yellow portion. And remember what I said, you got to constantly turn and tuck your color in. So you wouldn't want to go like this, okay? You're be I will be able to tell it. If you call or you show me a picture, you say, what did I do wrong? 
I can tell you immediately in a photograph that you had your brush aimed the wrong way. This is just the semi shading is something I designed uh, in the brushes about 27 years ago because I wanted to make it cheaper for people to be able to shade, base coat, highlight all in one brush. Okay, so Don, that just gives it. You can also come back in and I'll probably put some black dots in there. I've got to go back in and add some yellow. But what I'll do is I'll shade the rest of the white in. Then I can add some pink on that if I want. And then I'll shade some yellow coming out. So you'll have different uh, variety of colors. Uh, the pink that I'm going to use is baby pink. And the yellow that I used was that curry, which was a concentrate. So this moon yellow is the closest to that. I think you can see that. So that will be the acrylic that I'm using. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? I'm thinking we're tempting fate here, staying on too long. Jenny's laughing at me. I wish you guys could hear her. <laughs> She's being on me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and so ask any questions uh, because we're going to probably end this. I'm not going to sit and do the whole thing, guys, because it's just too long. So this white is almost dry. So I'm going to come back in here and add a little bit of pink on there. And you could do this before you added the yellow also, okay? That's another way to do it, but I see how that tones that down a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can get this turned around. Maybe I can get the pink to hold out here. And just remember to use um, the largest brush possible. So I should have switched back to my medium instead of the small before somebody tells me that. Okay. But when you set it down and it's on the ridges of the paste that's underneath. Do you see how it, it kind of bleeds and it almost like it's antiquing inside those crevices. That would be a way to explain it. This brush is, or this base is heavy. I'm going to set it down. So you can tuck it in, sit it down, sit it down. Oops, sorry, almost off camera. Okay, I have to stop and look at myself to make sure I'm still on camera. All right, so I'm going to go back to that stiffer brush because I don't want this. Now, if something happened and you got the lighter color too far, what can you do? You can go back and use your magenta and you can just shade on top of that. So uh, for instance, like some of this white is out further on this petal. So if I don't want that, I gotta find this spot to put a drop of this. So this is the magenta that I used to um, tint the paste with. Sherry asked if this is gonna be fired. Absolutely not. So this is glass, it would melt into a puddle. So this will not be fired. Even though this piece is not being fired, you can still use the concentrates. Yes, Marlene, you can. You can. It hardens in there. That's what I did on one of my ornaments and I tested it and I didn't have any problems. I left it on there for six months and I don't know where that one is at, but I didn't have any issues uh, with that at all. Uh, because it's just a pigment in a gel base, it's going to be fine. All right, so I'm going to tip into that magenta and I'm going to go up here and look what happens. So, and this is kind of nice just to add this because it is going to be a little bit different in color and it's going to run down in those crevices also. Good question, Marlene. But no, you don't, you don't have to worry about it. So the, all I'm saying is if you've got the color concentrates, you want to do this, all you have to do is add the paste to your collection and then you don't have to go out and buy acrylics. Do you have more options with acrylics? Absolutely. But isn't that cool? I think you can kind of see that where I deepened it there. So it's a couple of different shades. So it gives you different. And when I take a picture of it, I'll put a piece of white paper inside so that it's easier to see. All right. Any other questions? 
hopefully this gives you some ideas and maybe you'll want to try it. I'm going to go back down here. So the reason I was doing the uh, non-fired is because if you came in late, these are my ornaments that I'll do. So all white. So if I wanted to shade on top of this, I could shade with concentrates or I can shade. So let's say, hmm, which color would look? Oh, let's do them. This is just an experiment one anyway. So I could come in here on this. It's been dry for probably a year and I, I can shade. And this would be the same thing that would be happening on your ceramic if you were using a color concentrate. And I just shade and it bleeds. Just remember what, whatever you're putting on top, it's going to color. It's going to, I'm going to grab some of the concentrate green. This is 61 and I'll do a leaf for you so you can see it. Okay. Isn't that pretty? I like that. My brush is still damp, so I'm just going to touch into the color concentrate and I'm going to tuck that color in and shade. Now, if it was on ceramics, you would just fire this, use all your color concentrates to shade with or to color with, and you would just fire back to an 015, 016, 017, somewhere in that range. It needs to have a minimum of 1380 to bond to the surface and to cure the color and the paste. So every kiln is different, but, or you can just program in your digital to 1380, go 350 an hour up to 1380, um, hold for five, 10 minutes, and then just let it cool. Okay, so let's see how that is. Okay, any last questions? I'm not gonna finish all this because it's gonna take too long to do it, but I will post a photo later. So that one is dry. That's the one that we just did. It's starting to dry. So it looks wet in some areas and then chalky in others. And the chalkiness means it's dry. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. All right. So let me switch back. Yes, I can. Sorry, I forgot to turn my mic back on. Okay, so there's other video tutorials out on my YouTube uh, on glass. Doesn't mean if they're on glass, you can't use it on ceramics. It's You just have to use it on the medium that you're working with, okay? Okay, we got one last question. Sherry? Okay, so her question is, is it only the ceramics that you fire? No. If you're working on fused glass, Jerry, then you would full fuse. Okay. So remember this piece here? So there's your paste. So this was full fuse. It was slumped. And then I did the paste. I laid it back on the mold and I went to 017 or 1380 with a five to 10 minute hold. Okay, if it's on ceramics, then you're going to have, I'm going to turn this one light off. So you can see that oh, it makes me dark, but that's okay. So if it's on the ceramics, you would stilt and fire to an 015, 016, 017. Okay, but if you're on glass that you're fusing, you need to, this would be the last thing that you do. Okay, with a minimum temperature of 1380. Okay, all right, any other questions before we end? I don't want to tempt fate. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for joining. Do what? Oh, we've got um, two PDFs that we're going to draw for. So Jenny is going to spin and tell us who our two winners are. And you can go to the website and go to the learn here under the education tab at the top. And you can scroll through and find a technique that's $14.95 or less. And I will email you the PDF. If you win, you need to email me uh, at info at ceramics. 
info at colorsforearth.com or you can message me on Facebook. All right, Jenny, who's our first winner? Dawn, you won. Awesome. So you need to go to the website there or my email is listed there and you can pick out a technique. Okay. All right. So Jenny is going to spin for another winner. And who is it's the guy it's the guy's night all right Den Larson I think he just left but we will let him know he'll see it on there uh, if you could tag him <laughs> Dawn so pick out Dawn is a ceramic or you know there may be uh, one of these paste tutorials out there that you like go look because there is two of them um, I'm pretty two or more that is on a glazed ceramic piece so check those out and uh, that way you'd have a hard copy of everything okay all right guys thanks for joining me and i will see you next tuesday night and we're going to be talking glass hopefully i can get my butterfly done we'll see so have a good evening